Welcome to Rhodes and welcome to the Humanities Faculty. Um, it's great to have you here. Uh, my name is Judith Reynolds. I'm the, uh, one of the lecturers and the coordinator of the Humanities Extended Studies Program. Um, but I'm here not in that role today. I'm here to explain to you about curriculum approval, um, which is a really important part of the start of your degree because it's about choosing what you're going to do, which really sets you up for the rest of your degree. So we're going to go through things slowly and carefully. Um, and the, the idea of making a video is that you can watch this as many times as you need to, to get the information you need to make good decisions for yourself. The first thing is just to run you through the, the degrees that are um, offered in the humanities, which is the Bachelor of Arts or BA, the Bachelor of Social Science or BSS, Bachelor of Fine Art, BFA, Bachelor of Journalism, BJourn, and Bachelor of Music, which is the BMUS. Okay, so first of all, just some, some terms that you will hear and that it'll be helpful to become familiar with. Um, we talk about credits. Um, sometimes we just talk about credits at Rhodes in that you need 10 credits to complete your degree. Um, we also sometimes talk about NQF credits, which um, are to do with the requirements for a degree nationally in South Africa. Okay, so sometimes we have full year courses, for example, Drama 1, Sociology 1, Journalism and Media Studies 1. Um, and that course, you started in February, you finish it in November when you write your final exams. You, you do that course over the whole year. And then some courses are semesterized. So that means that they are separated into two halves. And an example would be Anthropology, where you do Anthropology 101 in the first semester and Anthropology 102 in the second semester. And politics works the same way. It's also what we, what we call semesterized. Um, it's divided into the two halves for the two different semesters. Another term that you need to become familiar with is majors. These are courses that you take up to third year level. So a subject that you major in, you would usually do, for example, Drama 1, Drama 2, and Drama 3. And when you've done Drama 3, you've majored in drama. Um, there are a couple of majors that don't take three years, but the majority, when you, when you say that you're majoring in something or you're planning to major in something, it means you're going to do it at first, second, and third year level. To get a degree at Rhodes, you need to have two majors. That's really important. That you need to plan ahead to have two majors in your degree. Uh, we also sometimes talk about prerequisites and co-requisites. So pre means before. A prerequisite is a course that you have to do in order to be able to do another course. Um, and co-requisites are course, co means together. Co-requisites are courses that you have to do together. There's not a lot of prerequisites and co-requisites in the humanities faculty. Um, they're much more common in commerce and science. Um, but there will be a couple of times when I, I need to tell you about a course that is a prerequisite or a co-requisite with another course. So to complete your, your, your degree, um, to do a three-year degree, you need 360 NQF credits, um, which basically means that you've taken 10 courses or it would be equivalent of 20 semester courses. And then to do a four-year degree, for example, the Bachelor of Journalism or um, the Bachelor of Fine Arts, you would do 480 NQF credits, which would be, depending on the course, maybe 11, maybe 12 um, courses, subjects that you do. Okay, so yeah, you'll do two majors. Um, and there are some subjects that can only be done from a second year level. So there's no Afrikaans 1, you can only do Afrikaans 2 and 3, there's no Environmental Science 1, um, there's no Information Systems 1. So those are courses you cannot do this year in your first year. You have to be a second year student to do them. And sometimes there are prerequisites that you need to do in order to do those second year courses. These are very unusual when you can only do a course from second year level, 
There really are a very small number of them. Most subjects, if you want to major in it, you have to start it at first year. Okay, so just a list of courses in the Humanities faculty. This is also available in the handbook. Um, anthropology, Drama, Fine Art, Fine Art Practice, Art History and Visual Culture, History, Journalism and Media Studies, there's, and, and then in the School of Languages, there's Afrikaans, African Languages, which is basically only um, Kosa at the moment, Chinese, Classics, French, German, Linguistics, Literary Studies in English, which is the poetry and the novels and drama and that kind of thing. Music, there's various music courses, um, philosophy, politics, psychology, and sociology. So those are all courses that are offered in the um, humanities faculty. And sometimes within a particular thing like music, there are different options. So it's really important to check carefully what the options are and make sure that you know exactly what course you want to do um, in a department. Okay, so in your first year, you're required to do four courses. Um, limited curriculum students must do three, and I'll talk more about what it means to do a limited curriculum later on. But most of you need to come to the desk to do curriculum approval, having chosen four courses. Okay. Um, there are specific subjects needs that students need to choose for Bachelor of Music and Bachelor of Fine Arts. You don't have the same level of choice if you are doing one of those degrees. Um, and I will discuss those degrees later in the presentation. Okay, so if you're choosing four courses, all four courses must be first year level courses. You can't go and pick something from here, there and everywhere um, to do, and you can't do something like Afrikaans, which only starts at second year level. So anything that has a one or a 101 after it, when you're looking at courses, is very likely to be something you can do. All right. A really strong recommendation is that all four courses you choose should ideally be possible majors. Okay, Things go wrong, people don't end up doing things that they were planning to do, um, and so it's really important to build flexibility into your degree by taking four things in your first year that you could possibly major in. Okay, So that's also important. Don't think that I've decided I'm going to major in law and politics, and then it really doesn't matter what the other two subjects are because I'm, I know that I'm not going to carry on with them anyway. In reality, that's not how things work. It's, it's, a really, it's really important to give yourself flexibility and choose four possible things that you could continue with if necessary. Okay, so an example of a Bachelor of Arts degree. Um, this person has chosen to do drama, philosophy, French, and anthropology in their first year. Uh, in the second year, they've carried on with three second year subjects, Drama 2, Philosophy 2, French 2, and they've picked up a first year course of Classics or Classical Studies. And then in the final year, they've taken their two majors of Drama and French. Okay, so this is a standard um, three-year degree at Rhodes, four courses of your own choice in first year, four courses in second year, preferably three second-year courses and one first-year course, again, to give yourself flexibility, and then two majors in your final year. Okay, so the requirements for a Bachelor of Social Science, it's the same number of credits and the same degree structure as a BA, um, but you need to have social sciences in your course. So you must do at least one of these as a major, and you must have a minimum number of five um, courses, five subjects in your degree from, not doing all five different subjects, but five different credits, five credits from, um, one, from this list. And I'll show you an example of a degree in a moment. So anthropology, you can do economics, it's a social science, but it is a course in the Faculty of Commerce. Journalism and media studies, political and international studies, psychology or organizational psychology, and sociology or industrial and economic sociology. So just a word with sociology and psychology. In first year, everybody does the same thing for psychology. And then in second year, you can choose between general psychology and organizational psychology. 
And the same thing with sociology, everybody in first year does sociology one. And then from second year, you can choose to continue with general sociology or switch over to industrial and economic sociology. Okay, so Bachelor of Social Science. Um, so this person has chosen to do three social sciences in their first year, politics, sociology, and economics. And they've picked up another humanities course, course which is history. Then in the second year, again, we've got three second year courses, politics, which is social science, sociology, which is a social science, history, which isn't, and then psychology, which is a social science. And then politics three and sociology three in the third year. So this person has um, eight social science credits, only history come from humanities. Okay. Rhodes has very flexible um, curricula. You're allowed to make quite a lot of choices and you're allowed to combine things that you maybe wouldn't be allowed to combine at other universities. So you are permitted to take courses from the science or the commerce faculties, but at least half of your courses must be humanities courses. So they must come from that list that I showed earlier of all of the courses within humanities. So at least half of your courses, at least two courses this year, um, two next year, and at least one of your majors, at least one of the subjects you take to third year level must be humanities courses. Okay, So you can't do like a whole BSc and call it a BA, um, but you can do some science courses or some commerce courses within the humanities faculty. Just a little bit of a warning though. Some courses, particularly in science, have prerequisites and co-requisites. So you should check this when choosing from, to do courses from other faculties. Um, so for example, to major in computer science, you need to pass a maths course. To, to do botany two, you need to have passed chemistry one and zoology 102. So don't assume that you can just pick anything and you're just allowed to do it. There are quite often, particularly with science, requirements of courses that you have to do in order to major in something or to do something at second year level. So you can get quite stuck if you suddenly decide that you're going to major in something and you haven't covered the prerequisites for it. Okay, so here's an example of someone who has taken a course from um, science, which is HKE, and they've also chosen to do one course from um, the commerce faculty, which is economics. So in the first year, we've got Psychology 1, HKE 1, Drama 1, and Economics 1. So half of the courses are from the Humanities faculty. Psychology and Drama are from Humanities. There's one course from Science, which is Human Kinetics and Ergonomics, and one course from Commerce, which is Economics. Again, in the second year, we've got two courses from Humanities and two from Elsewhere. Um, and then in the third year, there's one course from humanities, so again that would be half, and one course from science as the majors. Okay, what could prevent you from doing the courses you want to do? So there are lots of options, but there are sometimes things that um, restrict you. The biggest one that people come across is timetable clashes, which is when courses have lectures at the same time. You are not allowed to do two courses that have lectures happening at the same time because obviously that is going to restrict your ability to attend classes. Um, occasionally there'll be, a, a, usually the clashes are complete like that. Occasionally there'll be a clash where it's maybe just once a week, in which case you probably would be allowed to do the, the two courses. But if they clash two or three or four times a week, you're going to have to make different choices. Okay. There's another thing is the rules of the faculty. As I've just explained, um, there, there are restrictions on the number of courses you can do from other faculties as a humanities student. And then departmental rules on prerequisites. Um, and as I've said, these are unusual for humanities courses. But when you do courses from other faculties, they may become relevant. So, for example, if you want to do management two, you first need to have um, passed accounting one. So 
those are the kinds of things that will, will prevent you from just doing anything that you want to do. Although there are many options, you're not, you don't have complete freedom in some circumstances. All right, so I'm going to talk through some specific um, subjects because these are ones that either commonly come up or that you just need to be aware of. Um, so the first one is law. All right, so some students are admitted directly into a four-year undergraduate LLB in the law faculty. Um, if you're a student in the humanities faculty, this doesn't apply to you. But just to let you know, there are some students who go straight into an LLB. Um, there's also a small number of students who do their first year in BA or B Soxi, and they are then shifted sideways from the humanities faculty into the four-year LLB, the four-year undergraduate LLB. So that may be an option for you um, at the end of your first year to move into the, the undergraduate LLB. Um, but the majority of students who are interested in becoming lawyers they do a BA or a BSOCSI, and they major in legal theory. And then they do a two-year postgraduate LLB. So they do a three-year degree, they get a BA, one of their majors is legal theory, and then afterwards they do a two-year degree, um, which is the LLB, which is what you need to become a lawyer. So if you're interested in law, you choose legal theory one as one of your courses to do this year. Okay, so this would be an example for someone who's interested in doing law. They've got legal theory in the degree. They've got a, most of their other courses come from humanities. The person has chosen to do economics um, one, which comes from commerce. Um, but their other courses all come from humanities. And you can see that they are only doing legal theory one, two, and three. You cannot pick up any other law courses. There is nothing else available to you. First year, it's legal theory. And the rest of your degree is made in the same way as anyone doing any other um, arts or social science degree. You just find courses that interest you from primarily from humanities, although again you can come, you can bring in one or two things from science or commerce. Okay, um, um, another specific subject that you need to be aware of is environmental science. Um, it's a course in the science faculty but you can do it in a humanities degree. It's a two-year major. It's one of those unusual courses where there's no first year. Um, you only go into it in second year. But it has prerequisites. Um, so if you are interested in doing environmental science, you must do geography. And geography is made up of Earth Science 101 in the first semester and Geography 102 in the second semester. Plus you need to do one of these other courses. So anthropology, or botany, or economics, or geology, or zoology. But from this list, only anthropology is a humanities course. So it's most common for humanities students who want to do environmental science to do anthropology with geography. Um, you can make other choices, but just remember the rule that 50% of your courses must be humanities courses. Okay, management, this is a tricky one and often goes quite badly wrong. Um, it's a course in the commerce faculty, which means you are allowed to do it, but it's got lots of prerequisites. So to major in management, you also need to pass accounting one, economics one, theory of finance and statistics. Um, so this degree is very likely to take, well, it will take four years it's impossible to include so many commerce um, credits into your degree, plus take enough humanities credits and complete your degree in three years. So if you are very serious about majoring in management, be aware that your degree will take you four years and be aware that you need to do accounting, economics, theory of finance and statistics in your degree. Um, if you want to major in management, you must say that when you do curriculum approval. And it's better to do your curriculum approval with Karen Kouari, who's the faculty officer. It's a very complicated um, curriculum approval to do, and it's really best if you do it with her rather than doing it with someone else and maybe getting it wrong. Okay, and then information systems. Um, it's a course in the science faculty. It's also a two-year two major. 
To be allowed to do information systems 2, you need to do a course called ComSci 112 or CSC 112. It's a semester course. It only happens in the second semester. Um, so you would need to find something else to do in the first semester if you're going to do ComSci 112 in the second semester. Again, if you are interested in doing information systems as a major or just doing information systems 2 later in your degree, tell the person who's doing your curriculum approval that this is your intention so that they can make sure that you have the CSC 112 and you have all your other credits sorted out um, to continue with information systems. Okay, another really important one is that if you possibly, maybe, perhaps think you might want to become a teacher or that you might end up becoming a teacher, um, it's very important to include teaching credits in your degree. Um, you need to refer to the education faculty website for a list of the subjects that are required to teach various school subjects at various levels. Okay, Don't assume that you know what they are. Um, because sometimes they are not, not obvious. Um, so go and check and make sure that you have the courses that you, you would need if you want to do a PGCE. You need to have two subjects that you can teach um, and you would need to have them to the correct level at, at university in order to teach them at particular levels at school. Okay. Students sometimes get to the end of the degree, they don't know what to do next, they want to apply for a PGCE, but they've got a degree in journalism and philosophy, and that doesn't get you anywhere in terms of PGCE, because what are you going to teach? So if there is even a possibility that um, teaching might be for you, or might end up being in your future, it's really important to you to check what the subjects are, and then to tell the person who's doing your curriculum approval that this is what you're trying to do. Okay, so the Bachelor of Fine Art, um, you need to be admitted specifically to a fine art degree. Um, and the students must major in both fine art practice and art history and visual culture up to four year, fourth year. Um, so in your first year, you, if you're a fine art student, you're going to do fine art practice 1A, fine art practice 1B, art history and visual culture 101 and 102, and then you choose one other subject. Okay, so three of your subjects are set. You get to choose one other subject from the list of humanities courses or other courses if that's possible. Um, students who are registered for other degrees may change to a Bachelor of Fine Art if they meet the requirements. Um, you would need to talk to the head of department of the Fine Art um, department and all fine art students do curriculum approval with the head of department from fine art. Um, you don't do curriculum approval with anybody else. Everybody else will be doing the BAs and the BSOCSIs and the BJERNs. Um, you need to do your curriculum approval with someone from the fine art department. Um, okay, so people doing Bachelor of Fine Art have to do fine art practice and art history and visual culture. People who are doing a BA or a BSOC Sci or other degree may also choose to take those courses um, if they wish to. Okay, the Bachelor of Journalism degree. So the first three years of Bachelor of Journalism is exactly the same as for a BA or a BSOC Sci. So if you refer back to the slides earlier for BA, BSOC Sci, your degree would look exactly the same for the first three years. Um, obviously, if you want to do a Bachelor of Journalism, Journalism and Media Studies must be one of your four subjects and it must be taken as a major. Um, also for Journalism is a co-requisite to major in Journalism and this is usually done in your second year wh when you do Journalism and Media Studies too. Um, so don't, don't worry about that now, just be aware for what's coming up in future is that that will be one of the courses that you need to do. Um, and students must apply to do journalism too. There are limited numbers of spaces because of equipment. Um, and so 120 students are accepted from the journalism one class into the journalism and media studies two course. Um, the Bachelor of Journalism degree is equivalent to an honors level degree, although it is a bachelor's degree. Um, 
Okay, so the first three years are exactly the same as a BA or a BSOC Sci, and then in your fourth year, you only take Journalism and Media Studies 4. That's it. Just Journalism and Media Studies 4. Um, so that's, that's very straightforward in your, in your final year. Bachelor of Music, um, again, it's a four-year degree. First-year students must do Instrumental Music Studies, Music, Culture and History, Music Theory and Analysis, and then either Sound Technology or a Humanities course or a Science course. So there are three that you have no choice over. Those are set for you, and then you have some choice um, over your fourth course that you're going to do in first year. All Bachelor of Music students do curriculum approval with the head of department from music, so they will help you through this process. Uh, okay, and then um, two different four-year degrees where you, you still end up with a, um, a BA or a BSOC Sci. So the BA Extended Studies is generally for students who have not quite met the entrance requirements for a three-year degree. Either um, they've got slightly lower points or their points are fine, but they've got slightly lower English marks. That, that's generally the pattern. Um, so students in the first year of the Bachelor, the BA Extended Studies, need to choose from one of the following two streams. We have limited number of people teaching, so we can't offer all of the subjects. So you would either do sociology with politics, um, plus sociology extended studies, politics extended studies, and a course called academic and computer literacy, or you do anthropology and journal journalism and media studies. Okay, so if you're an extended study student, um, those are your two options, sociology with politics or anthropology with journalism and media studies. You don't have to major in these subjects. From your second year, you can do anything for, that other humanities students are allowed to do. Um, but in your first year, your choices are very limited. Um, okay, sorry, I, I didn't include a slide on the... Um, there is also a, a four-year degree where you're just told that you're doing a four-year degree. It's not extended studies. And in that, um, in that course, you can do whatever subjects you want, but you, you do only three in your first year instead of doing four. Um, so again, that, that will come up when you do curriculum approval. The person doing your um, curriculum approval should see that you are have a limited number of choices, but you, you should tell them as well. If you've been told four-year degree, um, you only choose three subjects. And if the person doing your curriculum approval questions that, say that you are a four -year, um, a, on a four-year degree, so you can only choose three. Okay, not sure what to do. Um, hopefully you've attended or are going to attend lots and lots of lectures during orientation week. Um, so that should really, really help you. Um, if you're still not sure, have a look at your Humanities Handbook. Okay, um, That will give you all of the subject options. It gives you little bits of information about what the subjects are. And that should help you make choices. Do not arrive at curriculum approval when you have made no decisions at all. It's absolutely fine to get someone um, who's doing your curriculum approval to help you make a decision between this and that. Um, or to help you figure out which ones are going to be your majors. But it's up to you to arrive at the desk for um, curriculum approval, informed, having read, having looked things up, having got information, and having made decisions. Okay, And don't do subjects you don't want to do. This is your degree. It, it works a lot better for students if they choose things they are interested in so that they remain motivated, Instead of thinking that I should do this because someone wants me to, or I should do this because someone told me it goes well with law or whatever it may be, that's often you know, not going to work out well for you. It's much better to go with things that, that interest you and that you are motivated by. So good luck. Hopefully all will go well for you. Um, and I'll see you at curriculum approval.